And and we have a, a great deal to talk about today, and, and hopefully we'll get to all of it. I We're beginning to see what a real leader looks like. Uh, if, if you were listening to the 8 o'clock newscast from Fox, you understand that the Russians aren't wasting any time going into Syria and trying to wrap up this civil war and perhaps finally destroy ISIS once and for all, which has been a challenge for the uh, the fellow. Well, he's obviously challenged, serving at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. If we get time, we'll talk about that a little later in the program. Also coming up, Russell Singleton is a physician assistant uh, joining us from Trip Family Medicine between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. We'll be talking about a number of things, varicose veins, restless leg syndrome. Uh, you you know, you understand that there are a lot of people out there as we age. There are certain things that happen to us that, that we never expected. Even though our elders told us, don't worry, it's going to happen to you. We all said, yeah, nah, it's different thinking this morning about something that happened in my life about 20 years ago, a little little note on that, and that is, as I was uh, was thinking about it, it struck me how quickly 20 years can go by. The thing, though, I want to open up on this morning, and <laughs> I came across this. I have to tell you something. I, I think that what you're seeing now, journalists no longer try to just give you the facts. They're trying to push a narrative, of course, and it's the narrative that they think is right, and and because they think they know better than everyone else, they think they're the smartest people to walk into any room and their swollen heads. They Well, they just don't know. There's no boundaries. This is a story out of magicvalley.com. If you don't know what that is, that is the online presence of the Twin Falls newspaper known as the Times News. Refugee food stamp Medicaid stats paint complex picture. They're trying to sell the refugee resettlement program. And, and, and try to, try, trying to silence any critics, which has become part of the mission of that newspaper. As I say, it's not about reporting just you know facts. It's selling a point. It's like the story they did a few weeks ago. They went out to Jerome and interviewed a number of people who have settled in Jerome and who are here from south of the border. And apparently no one bothered to ask any of these people if they're here illegally. Well, that wasn't the point of our story, I was told. Well, you know, as a reader, <laughs> I'm sitting there, and that's what I'm thinking about. Is when somebody in the story is interviewed and says, I arrived here in the dark of night, and when I got up the next morning and saw what it looked like in the sunshine, why are you coming in at the dark of night? Well, now that starts to raise a few questions, but you see, that might hurt somebody's feelings if you're asking them if they're breaking the law, so we can't do that. Nine minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And NewsRadio1310.com, 54. Going to be starting to cool off over the next few days, but nothing nothing really to be worried about. So the writer of the story, Nathan Brown, says, American-born residents of Twin Falls County are more likely to receive welfare than their foreign-born neighbors, according to an analysis of data by the Times News. Okay. Well, are there more native-born people living in Twin Falls County at the moment than non-native-born? Well, I don't know. If you go to Winco, you might be scratching your head on that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, so it's a difficult place to shop. But if, if you go to uh, to various places around Twin Falls County, you're going to notice it's still pretty much, pretty much people living here who are the descendants of people who came here 80, 90, 100 years ago. So there are a lot more of them than there are of newcomers. And so if you have if you have 10 times the number of native born people as you do newcomers then likely you're going to have more people who are receiving government assistance am i right just extrapolate bigger population means bigger number now is the number is it 10 times as large because that would say that it's about equal or is it 5 times as large that would say then that the number isn't equal and in fact native born people aren't on public assistance anywhere near as much Although, if the number is actually higher as a percentage, and more people who are native-born in Twin Falls County are receiving public assistance than newcomers coming here, as we say, as a percentage, then is it because the newcomers have taken the native-born people's jobs? Will anyone at that newspaper consider that that is a possibility when they're doing a story like this? The writer says figures show that native-born residents rely on government health care and food assistance in greater percentages than those born in foreign countries, though refugees are also eligible for short-term cash assistance to pay for things like food and housing after their arrival. And again, uh, I keep reminding people, if they find work, who, who, whose job did they actually find? 
And, you know, going through all of this, and it mentions that some of them are getting cash assistance because they came here and they're having difficulty. I didn't get that when I arrived. And, and I had been out of radio for about six months. I was wise enough to go do some other jobs, and I'd put away some money, so I was able to take care of myself. And I just cobbled, I created my own company and cobbled together some work to keep myself busy, but still times were tough. Nobody gave me anything uh, uh, from, from the taxpayers when I came here and resettled. And I do think that I bring something to this community. I know there are people out there. One liberal was complaining on a blog that he was writing that uh, I'm an outsider and that uh, that's why I'm opposed to all of these newcomers coming from overseas. Let me get this straight. I'm an American citizen. I'm born in this country. I moved to Idaho. I'm bad. Some guy who was born halfway around the world doesn't understand our culture and possibly, possibly likes to blow up buildings. He's good. You get the drift of how lefty is thinking on this one. When they assign these stories at the newspaper, I have a feeling that it goes something like this in the editor's office. Yeah, I want you to go out and find a story that makes this refugee program look good for the community. Uh, by the way, uh, don't call me chief. And when you're flying home, remember to pick up Lois and Jimmy. They're being held in a basement hostage by a couple of guys named Bugsy and Rocco. Yeah, I remember that from my younger days watching television. It's 813. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. You can reach our program this morning. Telephone number 736-0300. 736-0300. And, of course, my email address, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And you're next. You're on the air. My state didn't show you the word of the meaning droves. Droves means a lot of people. Not having your boyfriend Kyle call a lot of times. So you don't have droves. What the and hell are you talking about? Hello? 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 Incoherent. What time does that guy start drinking in the morning? I usually try to put it off until sometime in the afternoon, unless I'm watching a football game. Well, that means if I'm live at a football game, you understand, and I haven't been live to a football game in many, many years. Uh, yeah, the definition is rose and your boyfriend and dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pal, first of all, if you're going to succeed in this country, you're going to have to learn how to speak the language. And you can't keep claiming that there's, you know, that there's some sort of barrier that people are preventing you from doing it. If you're listening to this show every day, you're going to hear a lot of 10-gallon words. You can adopt some of those, and it might help advance your career. And then you won't have to go around driving that truck picking up donated couches. You can, you can go get a real job and maybe, you know, start to put some money away and save and build a business and learn what it's like to actually be a self-sufficient American. Coming up on 815, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. What Libby doesn't want you to know, this is out of the Wall Street Journal today. The German government approved legislation on Tuesday aimed at reducing a record stream of migrants that is causing growing unease among voters and putting financial strain on local governments. Now, your local newspaper here likes to say that the cost of these programs isn't really that high. Well, in Germany, the cost already estimated for this year to house all of these newcomers was just under $12 billion. I, I went and researched that fact. That's a fact, by the way. It's 11.6 if you want me to be, you know, really more precise. $11.6 billion was the newest cost that was being estimated. Well, that's changed. The government also set aside another $6 billion, $6.7 to be accurate, and extra money to deal with soaring migrant-related costs this year and next that will largely benefit Germany's 16 federal states which have complained about the growing pressure on their finances as they feed and house asylum seekers. Look, I understand when people say, well, it's not costing us really all that much money. All right, let's say you, you're taking care of your family. Let's say it costs you with your expenses for your children and their clothes and their dental appointments and the like. I'll throw out a number. Let's say it costs you $30,000 a year. And then all of a sudden, if somebody comes along and says, oh, you're going to have to pay another $20,000 a year to take care of all of these people's kids. Uh, but really, why should you be upset? It's not nearly as much as the $30,000 you're paying for your own. You're still paying out $50,000. And holy crap, that's a lot of money. 816. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. You're up next, and you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. Morning. Hey, uh, I just wanted to let you know, we've seen an influx um, of people out, which we've got the refugees in here lately, out at Walmart, uh, multiple signs of money. <laughs> um, I guess I guess our, our state assistance isn't enough. So I'm, I'm just kind of curious on how... 
why we're having this. So. Well, and, and you know, I've got I've got so many people telling me stories. Uh, we, we heard the other day the argument from the newspaper was that they're not causing a strain on law enforcement. Yet yesterday, a law enforcer happened to drop by the building here on an entirely unrelated matter. About 11.30 in the morning, and I was chatting away with this person who has been involved in local law enforcement for many, many years. And that individual was explaining to me that there have been a lot of domestic disputes that local police and sheriff's departments respond to. And when they get there, because culturally it's okay for these people sometimes to beat their wives. This is what I'm sharing, what I got from law enforcement. It's okay for them to beat their wives. When they get there, though, the wives will just stay mum because culturally the wives aren't allowed to speak when there's a strange man in the house. So therefore, the numbers are low. But maybe your newspaper could ask if they're low because these women aren't, when they're getting the, the living daylights beat out of them, they're not reporting it. 817, you're up next. You're on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Morning. You know, the big thing is they pointed out again the FBI cannot keep up with the online recruiting of ISIS. And uh, that was a, a news report this morning. And the two big things that I see that they're just glossing over is the fact we have too many immigrants coming in here or taking our jobs. There's, a, you know, just the legal immigration. There's two two immigrants for every new job. And, of course, the security issue, they don't even want to talk about that. And that's that issue. So I hope people will come out tonight to the Canyon Crest Event Center and see the true face of Islam and how they're, you know, not only the jihad terrorism thing, but just the fact of sheer numbers, and we're going to become a Europe, um, and all the things you've been saying about that, and the costs, and, and our, not only our jobs, but our culture, and, this, and what you're saying is just absolutely right on. So I hope people will come out and, uh, and, and find out from Pastor Hayden, who's a, you know, a... Uh, all right, I'm going to start charging you guys for commercials. Jeffy. Yeah, and anyway, thank you very much for, for publicizing <laughs> this. Thank All you very right, much. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Uh, very quickly, I, I, I've got to tell you that I'm hearing so many stories from people, and you could say they're anecdotal, but after a while, anecdotal stories build up, and they become a, you know, they start to become a pattern. I had, a, I had a message yesterday from a fellow who runs a business here in Twin Falls telling me, and, and again, this is what people are telling me, that there was a woman shopping at a local grocery, I think I mentioned it a few minutes ago, and she was stopped and upbraided and humiliated by these people because she was wearing a crucifix. Now, they do this a lot to the women. Do you think that they would go up to a six-foot-five-inch ranch hand and start that? Or do you think that he'd give them a little bit of Idaho, an Idaho greeting that they might never forget? But there's going to be trouble if this continues. And I don't know how you diffuse it. Unless you stand back for a while and say, all right, let's think about all of these other cultural aspects before we jump headlong into this. 53. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. You know what happened at a British grocery store where they had uh, food prepared for the Islamic customers? You're going you're gonna to listen to this story and wonder why they don't have a sense of humor. As I mentioned, we have some medical discussion coming up between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning with our friends from Trip Family Medicine. We're going to be talking about various issues you might have, especially people who are on their feet a lot. You know, some people have swollen legs, swollen ankles. Mm, the latter might not have a cause that, uh, <laughs> well... Just slow down a little bit. Uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about that, restless leg syndrome. Uh, Russell Singleton scheduled to join us. He's a physician assistant at Trip Family Medicine. They join us every Wednesday between 8.30 and 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. We call it Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. They have a shop located directly across the street from the main post office in Twin Falls. That's on Fillmore Street for those of you unfamiliar with the area. Uh, but easy to find. Big sign in the window says Trip Family Medicine, and that's Trip with two Ps. Also, speaking of medicine, we've been reminding you lately about getting your hearing checked because you really need to hear this show. Let's face it: if you don't, if you don't listen to this program on a daily basis, you're not going to need. You're not going to have the things you need to make some serious judgments about who's in power and who you're going to vote for and what you're going to read. There's a long list of things like that that we could, we could tell you about. Dr. Christine Pickup is a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology, which is easy to find online, mountharrisonaudiology.com. It's also easy to find because it's in Rupert. At 1218 9th Street, unit number 2, telephone number is 208-312-0957, 
And she'd like to remind you diabetes and hearing loss are linked. If you or a loved one struggles with diabetes control, it could also be affecting your hearing. The inner ear is incredibly sensitive to changes in your blood supply. High blood sugars can cause hearing changes. Be sure to have your hearing screen today. There's a story that I happen to see online coming from a website called woundedwarrior.com. Uh, apparently it's a, it's a writer or writers who were wounded at war for this country. Uh, who were they fighting in the last 15 years? Well, they were fighting radical Islam. Let's not forget that, and we still are. If you were listening to the 8 o'clock news on Fox today, you heard that the United States uh, has sent warplanes to bomb a certain city in Afghanistan where the Taliban have returned because President Obama declared that conflict over, as he did the conflict in Iraq. And then he declared the JV team, or ISIS the JV team. Remember, there, there was a story out last May that said, as it turns out, that he was actually encouraging this group that became ISIS in the early days of the Syrian civil war. So essentially, he and Hillary Clinton built that insurgency, and, and ultimately, you might say they have the blood on their hands from all of the people who've had their heads chopped off or been thrown off buildings or burned alive or drowned in cages. <sighs> There's no end to it. Some people, though, seem to have a good sense of humor about it, just not the people we're fighting. This story says, while it doesn't take much to enrage Muslims, what a non-Muslim who understands Islam's strict requirement on halal foods did to their meat section has sparked both fury and praise. This is out of England, apparently, because I think it's called the Hertfordshire Mercury. Now, that's a newspaper. There was a Facebook post <laughs> chastising an anonymous prankster for repeatedly placing pork products in the halal meat section of a grocery store. And there are photographs here. There's the halal foods, and then there's some packages of bacon tossed into the same bins. You know, the, the, the bins of cold or frozen food. And that apparently has annoyed the Islamic shoppers to no end. I'm not opposed to a store setting up a halal section. If it helps make money, you know, I'm, 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 I'm cool with that. When I walk through a grocery store and I see a section where they sell Latino foods, this has been my argument for a long time. Someone will find a way to make money off of these markets. You don't necessarily need to, to regulate it. On the other hand, if someone really wants to prevent this from happening, just open up a strictly halal market. And then you won't have to worry about someone walking 15 feet down to the pork aisle and coming back and tossing a couple of boxes of bacon into the, into the bin. Do you know how they actually prepare halal food? Uh, this, is, this is a rundown of it. And it's, it's not very good for the animal, I guess is what you could say. It says, although praying over the animal as a dedication of their slaughter to Allah is a requirement, the manner in which the animals are killed is absolutely appalling. Just a few rules for slaughter to meet halal certification detail the inhumanity. Here's one. The name of Allah must be invoked at the time of slaughter. I guess if you don't, you're going to be struck dead by lightning. Slaughter must be made by cutting the neck from the front and the chest to the back. Three, the windpipe, food tract, and both jugular veins must be cut through when slaughtering. Gee, they do the same thing with their prisoners over in uh, Syria, don't they? The animal must be alive as it's being slaughtered. No electric shock, stunning, or severance of the spinal cord should be made to ease the pain before the animal is slaughtered. Did Jeffrey Dahmer grow up like this? These methods may lead to the death of the animal before slaughter. Slaughter must be done manually, not by a machine. Uh, you know what? The fact that they want to live in the 7th century is their business, but why do they have to bring it to the Western world? There has been a lot of progress made throughout history. We've learned to bathe in the Western world. Uh, we take medicines in the Western world. You know, we, 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 uh, we've built tremendous office towers and we put men on the moon. Why do, we, why, why do we want to even deal with any of this? Is there, is there something wrong with liberals in this country that, they, that they, they would like to turn that clock back to? Of course they don't. They would want to live under that type of system. And yet you wonder why do they... So strongly back it. John Oliver, who's a British comedian, he has a show on HBO, spent uh, 17 minutes ranting about this refugee slash migrant, probably talking about halal, we shouldn't say slash, but he was, he was talking about it on his HBO program the other night, and the video of this is at the website today of the Daily Caller. So if you go look this up, you can find this. He went on a 17-minute rant about how evil it is to oppose all of these people coming here because he said... Even if they're not refugees and they're just migrants, well, gee, they, they're coming from an economically depressed area, so we should, we should let them in. 
Now, by that logic, does that mean the uh, the millions, tens of millions of Americans who are unemployed can also go to Europe and, and go on the dole and, and live a lavish lifestyle, uh, you know, working uh, one or two days a week if they can find it, otherwise hanging around the pub and watching soccer? By that logic, that's what that should mean. If somebody is not finding a job where they happen to live, then they should be able to go anywhere they want. Is that the argument? Why have borders in the first place? Is that the entire? Is that ultimately the real goal of all of this? The United Nations running a worldwide government, establishing Agenda 21, and destroying all of your choices, that is your liberty, and just controlling you because, gosh, you know there are just too many mouths out there to feed. Coming up in just a moment, we have better health with Trip Family Medicine. Russell Singleton, physician assistant, I believe, joining us today. We'll be talking about things such as swollen legs, restless leg syndrome, varicose veins, all of that coming up in just a few minutes. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story 54 at 8.30. And it's News Radio 1310 KLIX, just in case you were wondering. And News Radio 1310.com means you can listen to us anywhere all over the world online. 